Hi, this is Jennifer with City Farmhouse Antiques, and I am here with this week's find of the week, a beautiful piece of Mata Ortiz pottery. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to give a quick tutorial on how to ship your breakables, um, your art glass, your art pottery, your antique glass. And, and we've got company here this morning, so it may get a little noisy. They're, my coworkers are... are always working with me so first I get and these are my tips so first the, you know the number one thing I want to say is never package and ship art glass and antiques and when you're in a hurry when you have children running around on your under your feet especially when you're in a hurry you're gonna break it you have to be in the right frame of mind to to do this and and to package and ship these pieces or you're just going to be in a hurry and break it or drop it or wrap it too tight um, and this I guess is where my background um, being in the NICU comes in handy I've been used to holding all these little tiny under a pound babies so art glass isn't much different um, you just have to be careful and you have to focus and uh, just just that last week coming back from the south, I took my mom antiquing um, and brought back those beautiful bride's baskets that I showed you last week. And she happened to find a yadro um, that she really, really loved that I bought for her because I hadn't seen one with a calf. She raises cattle out in the country and it was adorable and had a little calf with its neck, you know, curved around this little girl with her braids. And um, anyway, make a long story short, we forgot our Uber was coming when she saw it. And so I made a point to tell her, okay, stay here. I'll go wait for our driver. And I told the man, he, he was an older man. And I told him, I said, please don't hurry. Please don't rush. We will wait for you. I know how this is. I pack glass all the time. Needless to say, about 10 minutes later, she came out and met me in the parking lot. And she said he dropped it and broke it. He was in a hurry. And I felt so bad. It's just my case in point. Just don't do it. Um, I thought we could fix it. It was broken at the head, broken at the ear. Um, so I found her another one. Again, this is I'm gonna. This is why I'm going through the wrapping. I ordered it online from eBay, and I will tell you, it got there. It was wrapped extremely poorly. Um, it didn't have a quarter of the wrapping that I'm gonna talk about. Did not have any packing peanuts. It's a wonder it was not broken in shipping. So that's why this is so important. Um, and I feel like my customers, you know, pay for good shipping and handling, which is not cheap. Um, but I am one that I choose to do it the right way. Um, and it is costly to do it the right way. And you will see all the materials that I use. So first, I want to show you that because of all of the delicate paint on this, it's very, very easy to mar this. It's easy to rub off some of the paint. So I don't ever want it rubbing against even... The plastic bubble wrap so that's why I will snugly wrap a piece like this in tissue paper probably double paper and I will tape it and then I use two layers of bubble wrap so when I am bubble wrapping something I will use small bubble wrap because it will take up those small areas and I will wrap it in a single layer of small bubble wrap after the tissue paper and then I line it with the larger bubble wrap which everyone has seen the larger bubble and the object is is you don't want to feel your piece when you get done wrap, wrapping it you don't want to feel any curves in the glass um, you don't want to feel any points any ends nothing you should not feel your piece anymore at all if you feel your piece in a corner then you've got to add more bubble wrap and then you will tape it I like the clear packing tape because it sticks and it pulls when I pull that um, bubble wrap together. Some don't like it because when you unwrap your piece you don't want to pull but I'll leave notes for my customers on how to open a piece. Um, so some prefer like a painter's tape um, because you can easily pull it off without yanking on it to get your piece open because when you open a piece of glass that's been wrapped like I wrap you don't want to yank and pull you want to cut away the tape 
because if it's extremely delicate, you can break it just unwrapping it. So once you get your two sizes of bubble wrap on, your small, your large, it's important to shrink wrap it. So I use this shrink wrap and I shrink wrap my piece. Now you also have to keep in mind what kind of piece you're shrink wrapping. You want it to be tight and snug, but if you have a very, very delicate, delicate, like fine hand blown stem on something, don't wrap it too tight. It will snap it right in half. Um, and then the other key is, is you want to find the right size box. I don't scrimp on, scrimp on the size of boxes. You want to always use packing peanuts. So after you get your bubble wrap and your shrink wrap piece, you put it in a box that's quite a bit larger, large enough to have two inches all the way around, top, bottom, and all sides of packing peanuts. And you want to jostle your packing peanuts to get them firmly on the bottom. You also, this piece is so light that when you get it in here, and you can see how little this piece is in relation to this box, there's, there's probably three inches around all sides. So when I get this wrap, there's going to be plenty of, of room for peanuts. If you have a heavy, heavy, heavy piece, this is a light piece, so it won't matter. But like a piece of Murano glass, a piece of Lalique, Keep in mind, those are going to sink, and they're going to sink down in between these packing peanuts and go to the bottom. And if they go to the bottom, then they run the risk they've got no peanuts around them. So I will often put some cardboard, another layer of cardboard, more peanuts, or that's when you want to do box in a box. You want to put that heavy, heavy piece of glass in a box, and then, of course, after it's bubble wrapped, and then you want to put it in two to three inches of peanuts around that sealed box. So those are some of my tips. Um, I like to use USPS whenever I can, priority, because I feel like it's safer for those smaller pieces because I think it's a max of like 70 pounds that can fall down on it on a conveyor belt. So when you pack your piece, you have to be prepared for up to 70 pounds. And if you're going FedEx or, or UPS, it can be more than that um, to come crashing down on top of your box. I always mark it fragile, although I don't know that that means anything. Sometimes I will re even reinforce it because these, um, these priority mail boxes, they do come free, but they're not real, real thick. They're not as thick as the boxes that I buy. So you can, you can use your inserts or excess cardboard and put other insert, inserts around the sides or around the top. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, and I hope the example that I gave you of us being, you know, at that antique market and that man, and I know he spent years wrapping things just like I have, but it doesn't matter how good you are at this. If you're in a hurry, it never, ever, ever fails. Um, you know, and I've spent two hours wrapping something and then getting that that uh, darn shrink wrap too tight and breaking the handle on something. So there's a lot of tricks to the trade. Um, and we all have our individual favorites on what types of materials and stuff we want to use. But take your time doing it. That's the most important tip I can give you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. And be sure and check us out on our website at www.cityfarmhouseantiques.com and give us a like on Facebook.